Now what will happen to this electric dipole when you put it into an electrical field? Well, electrical dipole moment in an electric field will experience torque, right? And that torque is going to be equal to dipole moment times the E. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So now let's talk about dipoles and electrical field. So let's say we have a plus and a minus dipole and it is placed in an electric field. Okay, so I don't know, let's suppose that this electric field is pointing this way. So if the electric field is pointing this way, it is going to be from plus to minus. Uh, I probably shouldn't be putting, goes from the plus to the minus charge, right? So in that case, if the E field points that way, my uniform, then this means the positive uh, part of my dipole is going to be pushed that way, and the negative of my dipole is going to be pushed that way. If D is the distance between them, what happens is it's going to have a torque moment into it. So the plus charge is going to be in one direction, and the negative is going to be forced into the other direction. So this force will be equals to QE, and this force will be equals to minus QE. As a result, we will have a torque. And we know torque is equals to R perpendicular times F. So because of this dipole moment, we also know that the dipole moment is equals to QD, right? We know that it points from the negative charge to the positive charge. So my dipole moment is going to be from here to here. So net torque that I am that, that my system is going to experience will be sigma F or net torque will be torque due to the plus and the torque due to the minus charge, right? This means it is going to be D over 2 sine theta times F plus D over 2 sine theta times F minus and F plus. Plug those values in here, I will get, if F plus and F minus, they have to be equal in magnitude, okay? Once we know that they're equal in magnitude, then I can drop these for now, because I'm only talking about magnitudes right now. So I will get D F sine theta. So my F net, or my sum of the torques, will be DF. I should probably write F here so that we don't confuse this with the derivative of F. So F D sine theta. And I will know that its direction, because it is perpendicular to the plane of the page. Okay. So that means it's coming out. What that means is my torque is going to be this way, E is that way, P is this way, and this is the angle theta. That's my torque, just so you know. Okay, now, what else? Ah, my F I know is equals to QE, so I can put in QED sine theta which means I can combine these two together, so I will get a PE sine theta, or in vector form, net torque will be equals to P cross E. Another thing that's really important is what is the work done by this kind of a dipole? Work done by an external field in turning the dipole moment from some initial angle to some final angle, okay? So once this is done, so the next thing is work done by external field, I should call it, sorry, I don't want to call it E field, I want to call it external field. Work done by external field to turn the dipole.
from some initial angle theta zero to some final angle theta. How will we find that? We know that this work done will be equals to dw, right? We recall, we know from intro one, this w is equals to torque times the angle that it moves through, okay? So this means in this case it will be some angle theta naught to theta torque times d theta, okay? Now this is going to be flipping this way, so that means we're going to have a minus sign in the angle, which is going to be minus theta zero to theta. It's anti-clockwise, right? Anti-clockwise torques are negative. That's why this negative sign comes in. So that means I can plug in the value of torque that I calculated from before, which was PE sine theta. I can plug that value in here. So what I get is minus theta zero to theta PE sine theta d theta, okay? Or PE sine becomes equals to cosine theta from theta zero to theta. And then the work done will be PE, sorry, this should be a small p, dipole moment cosine of theta minus cosine theta naught. Now another thing that's really, really interesting that leads from here is potential energy. We know that potential energy, the change in potential energy, is the same as the negative work done. So this means that the potential energy change to move this dipole from some initial angle theta zero to some final angle theta is equals to the negative work done or equals to PE cosine theta naught minus cosine theta. Ooh, I should put a bracket here because it'd be multiplied with both, both of them. So this is going to be PE cosine of theta naught to cosine of theta. So that means delta U is given by this. Now we can arbitrarily assign a reference angle, let's say theta zero. If theta zero is 90 degrees, then this implies cosine of theta zero is equals to zero which reduces delta U equals PE cosine theta, which reduces this equation to PE cosine of theta, or we can say delta U equals PE. So that is a dot product. So delta U is going to give you a dot product P dot E. What does that mean? That means that U or potential is minimum when P and E are parallel. So if they are maximum when the, poten the, the, the potential is maximum when it is at 90 degrees to each other and minimum when they are parallel to one another.